All right, but yes, we have a game today between uh, Cho Cho Han, a nice, strong Korean professional nine down, versus a Chinese player. You, some of you may recognize. You might have, might think that maybe you've seen him play a game, but you probably weren't looking at that game to study his play. You're probably looking at him getting smacked around by someone else. But you might be aware of you might be aware of him. You might be aware that he actually exists. Even if you're not certain, like, if he's ever won anything, or what his history is. And uh, that's, that's completely fine, because we're not going to go over that anyway. We are going to go over Cho Cho Han's moves, because they were quite interesting this game. As per usual, is anything played unusually in the beginning? No, of course not. Why? Because it's my review. So that's what uh, we've just come to expect. Nice standard opening in which white doesn't take a second corner and instead approaches immediately, leaving black to decide what to do. Not completely standard, but not that bad either. Yeah, you can do this, especially if, let's say, you are a, maybe, maybe for some weird reason You've played against Chinese openings a one too many times lately, and you just don't want your opponent to get one of these variations. So, one thing that you can do is approach immediately. What do we eliminate now? We eliminate Orthodox, that's gone. We eliminate Chinese, that's gone. So, finally, something different. A breath of fresh air, as it were. Surely this will be an interesting, interesting game. Well, black can do multiple different things. You can take the open corner, that's completely viable. Can attack the, uh, can go ahead and attack uh, the approaching stone, that's, that's fine too. So, what is he going to do? I hope black creates a Chinese formation on the bottom now. <laughs> Uh, no, he's not going to do that. Instead, he pincers very, very wide. Leaving white to the side again. What is he going to do? We got the open corner still. We've got approaching. We've got a whole bunch of stuff we can do. And as uh, Jermel's pointing out, this is a little bit unusual to see. We usually see uh, tighter pincers, right? Because the idea here is you're just going to respond locally or he's going to respond uh, somewhere else, right? And if you respond somewhere else, we have nice severe follow-ups that we can play against the low stone. And if he responds locally, then, you know, we can pick a second for that too. Uh, but this is a little bit interesting. This is uh, hard to bring a lot of pressure down on this little stone. So I'm curious to see what white is going to do here and how black is going to respond. Well. White sides to do the lean, fairly straightforward, offers a quick settling. Black does not take the quick settling, he's not going to go and offer a variation similar to this. Not going to potentially give up his corner for this kind of deal. Instead, he decides to push through, and this Giuseppe you may have seen before as well. Uh, it looks complicated. It looks a little complicated you know I mean we we see the groups involved and that's a lot right kind of have to look after all of them but rough thankfully there's a roughly uh, straightforward variation in which you settle because white's gonna try to settle in the corner black's gonna try to come out white's gonna go ahead and now, usually we see answers here, but white decides to change up. He just wants to settle. He could be like, I'm not going to do that. But instead, he's interested in uh, settling. Black says, okay, I'm going to connect. Now, what are you going to do? White says, well, now I'm going to keep you in. White, okay. Black is now kept in. Now, we can't be passive here, is the important part to remember with this variation. If we tried to play S17, for example, right now, in order to quote-unquote live, 
then we will quote unquote die and press the quote unquote resign button and be quote unquote unhappy. Because it's just this isn't enough room to live, right? Just not enough space. So you have to be aggressive. White can't be overly aggressive. If white plays here, it looks very, very severe. It looks like something that is going to make us very, very sad. But what's the problem with this particular move? What, why is this Hane uh, not going to work? Does anyone know? Anyone know why this isn't going to work quite as well as maybe he hoped it would? Hmm, yeah, a little bit of a bummer there with Q18. If we do play Q18, then we can't just be like playing this way, because that, that was just weird and didn't work. So I guess we play this, or this, essentially saying quite definitively that you don't mind not living in the corner. Okay. That's a problem. So now you have to worry about having to completely kill everything on the inside, and you have to worry about your P17 stones, and they're horrifyingly undercut now as well. What about white R17? This? That just makes it easier for uh, <clears throat> black to kill white, right? Because you're reducing your liberties? All before Q18. Oh, right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't do the whole Hane thing. We do see this. Ah, I see. So, okay. Now black's getting uh, some shape in order to live with. White decides to play aggressively and completely surround the corner. This is where our life and death comes into play. It's like, are we, are we alive? Are we dead? Are we in trouble here? Because rumor has it that if I just back off at, at, at there, then that might not be enough. I don't know. Doesn't look like it. Looks like that dies. What do we do? What do we do? Well, black plays the honey. And for those of you like having trouble envisioning that. Picture that, picture that, picture that, now picture yourself crying. Fairly easy picture to have in your head. Because you can make like just the one and that's about it. So can't play that way, can't play that way, can't play that way. Instead we try to kill this. And why not? S19 was the uh, move that really made us uh, quite sad, really. Tries to defend Incente, gets a response, and decides to leave. Okay. Making certain that uh, he's expanding his uh, base. That, that makes sense, that makes sense. This is an interesting thing to see. It looks weird. Like, why on earth would we ever play this when it's just going to result in us having to connect? Right? Doesn't that seem a little strange? Doesn't that seem a little bit strange? Our 13 stones, what? Uh, we don't care about them right now. But we do do this because there's a lot of problems here still. Uh, let's just borrow this move, for example. There's the throw-in still, there's that still, and there's all of these ways that we can still uh, reduce, you know, Black's uh, lovely little corner, make it so he can't live locally. So he pushed. Now that's one that's gone. Uh, he is attacking, but not the R13 stones. White has to connect. And this next part 
This next part is what you uh, have missed so far, Jermel. White fixes shape, or aids the shape, rather. It's not completely fixed yet, but he is uh, aiding his cutting stones. Forces a response from white, because he doesn't want to get surrounded. Kills some shape from light. Now this is odd. He's ensuring that he's alive in the corner. A very, very important move. Now that he's alive, White has to evaluate his groups. And we can see the following. This is undercutting and, you know, not completely surrounded yet, so that's good. This is a two-space extension, uh, but that attack is really, really large. If, Bl if black actually gets an attack on his white stones, oh man, what's going to happen there? What's going to happen there? I mean, you're just going to run and just give up the entire bottom of the board? I mean, the corner's going to be gone. Is black going to get a chance to expand here while attacking you? That would be way too much. So white says, OK, we're not going to let that happen. Kablam. Got myself a base. You're not going to attack me. We're good. However, just because one group is now completely fine, doesn't mean your other one is. OK, but someone says. So OK. Is this alive as is? And if so, how do we make it alive? We have we have two choices, right? We can extend up into L17, or we can like what? Pull back at M18. Neither of those are really what we want to see. I mean, do we really want to play moves like this? in order to try to live and even then where's your where's your eye shape coming from it's coming from uh it looks like this it looks like about that that's the, that's the space you're trying to live in right now that's that's pretty much it that looks like it's hard to actually live with in the sense that you can't so white must call no joy and give up his stones. So that went pretty well. That went pretty well indeed. On the bright side, Sente. White can go back and take that corner now. Sweet. Corner's been taken. Good to know. We did lose a few stones. But all we really did was we, we just gave black a corner. I mean, we just took one for ourselves. Everything is still okay. Black fouls up taking the other corner for himself. Makes sense, makes sense. White uh, tries to profit on what he's obtained so far, making uh, some development on top. Okay. Now, if I saw my P18 stones die, I would try so hard not to resign. I think I would go back to studying Jiseki at that point. Because that was really, really not good. But okay, here's a question for you. What kind of game are we playing right now? Is this going to be an influential game? Is it going to be a territorial game? What is black thinking? I should specify. What, what are Black's thoughts right now? Okay, Black is leaning towards territory. We see the small knight in the lower right hand corner. We see the dead stones on top. It looks like he is, it looks like he is in fact playing a more territorial game. White, on the other hand, 
has dual 4-4 four, four points, and he seems to be actively trying to expand into the center. So we know that he wants to take this influential. He's not going to try to fight us uh, in terms of territory, it seems. He wants to make a, something large and hold on to it. Okay. So influence versus territory. Well, there's a few interesting ways in which you can actually combat someone's uh, hold on your influence. Or hold, uh, uh, someone's hold on their influence. There you go. That doesn't give you a weak group and takes some points from you as well. It's a very, very fun move that almost always seems too early to a lot of cues. And that is the happy 3 3 point. White is trying to grow from this corner. So one interesting thought that you can have in your head is I'm going to hit the source of what he's growing and then reduce the influence from it. So pretty cool move, pretty cool move. Yep, this is the actual game, this is the actual game. There would have been a lot more uh, profanity if this was not the actual game because it would have meant that I had destroyed the tree again. So, good tell there, good tell. Sorry, influence versus territory. We block this way because the other way is just painful, right? You don't block this way and create a wall that leads to nowhere. I mean, you need your points. But, oh, that's so over-concentrated. Oh, you don't, you don't want to play this? This is, this is so not, not feeling it, not feeling it. But we're locked. So white says, I'm going to get all of the influences. Black says, fine, I'll, you can write me down for more territory. White says, I'm really going after the influence here. It's my plan. Wait. Okay, yeah. White tries to get in a forcing move, trying to get uh, Black to either play B8, B15, or extend to B13, then have to go and send back again to get more of that their influence. But here's something that was very interesting that I thought. You thought that was very, very unusual. I didn't expect this exchange at all. He starts with a probe. It's like, how are you going to respond to this? Are you going to, are you going to drop down and let me maybe get some kind of weird attack going on K18? Is that a thing? Are you going to connect and let me connect under? It's like, which, which, which variation are we playing out here? Which, which variation are we playing out here? White says, I'm going to connect, nice and simple. And then black says, okay, I'm going to push then. To which white Hane, because obviously our opponent has to play B18, or what the heck? Where'd that come from? B15, there we go. Because if he doesn't play B15, then he's in trouble. So, Black opts for the I'll be in trouble variation, in which he decides to play the cut, thus potentially giving up his corner for the outside. So, okay. We're now making that exchange. Though, to be fair, they're still Aji. Um, there's still actually quite a bit of Aji back uh, in that corner. But still, a little bit unusual, a little bit unusual. But right now, we wouldn't want to use it. Right now, he decides, gets extension, makes sure his group's nice and fine. Seems weird, if Blackwood decide he should just approach um no leaving Aji behind in the position is very 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 large I mean the difference between let's see what can I show real quick um 
Yeah, let's do. Um, okay, this is not exactly what you're referring to, but let's just show it anyway. Um, I need this. Let's go split. Let's take this for example. This. I'm not breaking anything, thank you. Let's take this for example. White plays a three space, and everyone knows to immediately invade. Now, you could say, if you had no intention of ever saving your stone, why did you even play it? You just gave up. You just give up a stone, you're giving up points. There's no point in doing that if you're just going to do that. If you don't want to save your stone, then don't play there to begin with. Uh, but that's not true, because as long as that stone's on the board, you can do things. Like, I can threaten to link up and see what my opponent's going to do. Is he going to play this and allow a little bit more reduction here later on? Do I get to play here and get some influence later on? Etc, etc, etc. So yeah, there's a lot you... Uh, even if you have no intention of doing anything further with that, that one stone is actually still uh, very important. In this case, same thing. Those stones are going to be annoying for white. We're going to see it immediately. Because white plays down for a solid kill. There's going to be no... Like... I almost messed up the tree. There's going to be no weird... Uh, threats to come out and live later or anything like that. This is now going to be solid points for white. And that's Sente! So okay, that corner sacrifice is paying for itself. Got on the little on the outside, getting to reapproach a corner. Got a lot going here. White's forced to play the moves we don't ever like to play, and that's this uh, corner. These little three stones. I mean, yeah, you've got some territory. It's not, you know, not the most secure yet. But you've no development, no future potential there. Does black have potential? Yes, as we see in the very next move. He's gonna take an extension for himself. Oh boy. So now White has to ask himself, where's the potential? Where's the potential? What are we gonna do? We've got the upper left. We maybe have a corner. And we have a double T-space extension. Okay. Okay. White, to his credit, tries to play simply. Like, okay. I wanted to build. My stones aren't dead yet. I'm going to go after your group here again. Because there's Samaji here, too. I mean, N16's interesting. Um, the cut at P14 is interesting. So, alright. This just kind of makes sense. Black responds, making sure his shape is all nice and cool, not going to get surrounded. Okay. Gets to continue building. Which Black says, stop that. has to respond. To be fair, this is turning into a very large corner. Which is why Black immediately decides to reduce it. I mean, does he have anything else to worry about right now? Let's check. How did he get to that how did he get to that move? We see A, and A is pretty friggin' strong, right? It's killing a stone. Okay, might not be an actual eye later on because of like things like uh, A13 maybe is a follow-up later, but it's got a three-space extension, and it's out, and it's got friends nearby, so yeah, A's looking pretty dang good. Um, obviously, small night enclosure, not surrounded, that's pretty strong. This has got a little bit of an overextension vibe going with it, but if White really wants to jump into uh, this area and give himself a weak group, he's more than welcome to do so. Because he's got a little bit of an issue with territory right now, and doing that isn't going to help him any. And last but not least, we've got this group at D, which is killing something as long as we don't get completely surrounded and all of our liberties taken away. So we don't really have anything weak to worry about right now. 
Therefore, playing an aggressive move, such as this really, really huge dive in to reduce all of the things, isn't really that bad, because you're reducing, you're threatening a small knight, and you don't have weak groups on the board. So it seems okay, it seems okay. It passes our little checklist. White says, I know what you are trying to get me to do, sir, but I'm going to keep surrounding you. Works. Can't let him cut. So white continues to surround. All right. That could be an issue later. Going to have to probably spend some more moves to uh, kill off P18. That's going to be worth some, uh, some points in endgame, I would think. So all right, that matters, that matters. I was about to ask some, what do you do now is black? And Jermel immediately uh, gets it. You have two choices, you can attack, or you can defend. I mean, you're, you can't really expand anywhere, right? The corner sides, those are all spoken for, so you're either attacking or defending something. That should make sense to everyone. We do have things we can defend, which Jamal has pointed out, the uh, J13 stone. We could cut, as Ronan's pointing out, all of those small knights. But the top is pretty strong and the right is pretty strong. So we could cut two strong groups, but that doesn't really feel like it's a good idea. So let's just uh, defend ourselves instead. It makes perfect sense. White's going to point out that just because he's defending himself doesn't mean he's completely outside of his grasp. He's going to cut his connection. Black threatens likewise. But this is a scary move. Not only is he threatening to cut through, holy crap, he's also threatening to grow all the way across the board immediately. So we have to be weary of this. White says, forget you, I'm going to, this, you're attacked. Defend yourself immediately and give me points while you're doing it, preferably. And here's something that I would never have found in a million years. Here's something that tells all of us definitively that Cho Cho Han is better than every single person that's going to watch this video. Because a lot of people are going to be like, okay, I'm, I, I'm, I'm so in trouble. I've got like these three stones here, I don't know where I'm connecting to. I need to defend again, or something. Defend, maybe cut as my threat, uh, just something, anything. But Cho Cho Han apparently sees this board differently than we do. He looks at this board and these three stones and like, yeah, they seem okay. I, I think these stones have been uh, defended quite enough, thank you. I think it's time to attack again. It's like, what? It's like, how did you find this move? What is, what is going on here? But after we ask ourselves what is going on here, we see a couple of things coming into play. We see this move very, very close to being Sente. Right? Because those stones are almost completely dead if this gets cut apart. White has to go back and, you know, worry about these little guys. So if this is going to be Sente, if this is anywhere close to being Sente, then suddenly the right group is only a two-space extension if we can split it. Especially since it has all of those awesome small knights. So, we might immediately think, it's time to defend ourselves, but he sees weakness and he can and he just continues attacking. So okay, white says no hane. No hane. Hane bad. Hane gives you Aji and I'm not giving you that crap. So now what do you want to do? It's like, well, I think it's time to jump up. Because black is slowly getting stronger where all of these small knights are. So this is turning interesting. He has to connect underneath, because he doesn't want to lose R7. Which means all of the small knight cutting is coming back into play. And that's just really, really cool. 
Because this, this is supposed to be white's attack on black, not black's attack on white. I mean, sector lines. I've heard them before. And it looks like black stones are behind them, almost, kind of. So we should be worried, sort of, I think. But here he goes, trying to attack instead. So white says, I see the danger here. The danger is all of my everything's being cut apart. So he defends immediately. Because there's threats here, like we mentioned, and there's threats here, like we mentioned. And defending them both, uh, yeah. If this isn't defended and black gets one, then suddenly you're fighting in the center for all of this. I mean, with that move over here, he just threatened to, like, attack this much of the board. That's just crazy. So all right, white defends. He's not gonna. He's not gonna lose all of his things. He refuses to do that. Black gets to connect though. White strengthens, and this pretty good move. Pretty good move threatens the corner. Makes the bottom stronger. And it looks like, as Jermel just pointed out, it's going to be Sente, because we don't want to see the 3-3 three, three at this point. I mean, where's White's territory? The upper left still, which we can count quite easy. And a bunch of second line crap over here. So he's still in trouble. This whole, you know, use your influence to attack thing is just not going well so far. So all right. Painful move. Want to do everything other than defend this corner, but we have to. Black gets to cut through because there were two cuts. There were two cuts. Black's not the one in trouble. White's the one in trouble. And it looks like he always has been ever since White tried to attack Black Stone. So I want to go back and reiterate this point because I've taught so many people, I've seen so many people, whenever they feel threatened in any way, they just lock down their brain into defensive mode instead of looking for ways to counterattack in order to get stronger, right? But not, not Cho Cho Han, he was under attack and he immediately found a way to get stronger and put the attack pressure back on his opponent and not onto him. Uh, feminist said, what's a nice name? Says, what if Q10... Okay, instead of S. Okay, what's S10? S10 is that. Oh, righty then. Play here instead. Um, let's see, does that let the Hane work? Doot, doot. That's double honey now, right? We're getting into a variation like this where we're cut off and we're kind of getting screwed in the middle. Yeah. So yeah, that'd be painful. I mean, we want to play something like that to, you know, strengthen our our uh, connections, but we actually lose them as a result. Where was I? Whose move was it? Okay, it's White's move. Not messing the tree up. Not messing the tree up. Okay. So White says, you've cut me, good sir. I admit, I am cut. But if I force you to connect, I get sente, and I was sente and get shape, so this maybe the entire middle is not gonna go to you just yet. Okay, we'll see how that works out. Black remains aggressive, because why not? He's still threatening white shape. Cut's not completely defended yet. 
light cuts for maximum profits. Double Atari, in the hopes that we can keep all the things. So right now, we're in a fight where White's trying to keep as much territory as possible and kind of trying to keep the middle nice and weak. If Tengen were to be played right now, nah. Tengen, I can see Tengen making some sense. I mean, it's, a, it's poking, it's the Hane. Not right now, clearly, that'd be insane, but yeah. Oh, earlier it moved 94. Yeah, maybe. All right, so White plays the Atari. Black tries to reduce some more. White says, no, you're dead now as a result. Black says, prove it. It's like, okay, I will run on second line until it is proven. Now it had better be proven, otherwise this is getting really awkward. So what do we do now? How do we respond to this? Because this is a complicated life and death problem. This is a really complicated life and death problem. You can't get this one wrong, otherwise the entire game just ends. I mean, we can all see what's going on here. Black's threatening to connect and kill white at the same time. However, if white plays one more move on the second line, then g14 comes back out and black suddenly is threatening to kill white again all over the place. So the only move that can be played right now and not be horribly killed is the defense. Cuz he has to keep he has to keep he has to keep this dead. This is all of his territory. There is no, there's no compromise here. This is all dead, or he has nothing and resigns. So it's, it's that simple. What about white g18? Okay. Um, let's see, this, this. So I guess you're looking to do... Let's see, do we do that now, or do we do that later? Do, do, we do that now, we push, and then that gets there. Oh, I can't tell. Do we do it now or do we do it later? I think we extend now? And then this has to drop down, but that doesn't really work, right? So how do we save this group? How do we save the uh, L14 stones if we do it this way? How do we defend against this? We have two liberties and we're never getting another one. Ah, I see. So yeah, he has to play here to defend his uh, L14 stones, which means black gets to connect, but white says, I'm not dead yet, which, I don't know, we want to believe him, but we're skeptical. We're skeptical. It's kind of turning into, uh, I don't know. A thing. So, all right, no co. Backs off. Forces a connection. We get an eye. That's good. There's an eye here. So we might have a chance to kill. I mean, white or black needs an eye too. So he connects. Which means black gets to. Uh, 
Your white gets to still try to poke out the eyes. This might be dead yet. This might still be dead. Until, well, actually I'm not going not gonna to do it yet. Does anyone see? Does anyone see the problem here? Does anyone see Black's nuclear option? No? Okay. Pretty simple. We can play here, which results in the Hane. Yeah, the Ko. Yeah, the Ko is a nuclear I I always think of it as such, I, because I always lose them all. The minute the Ko comes out, it's like, all right, yeah, you're right, war's over. You win. So, all right, we've got this now. Whoops, my bad, sorry. I meant to play there, shoot. Yes, rip tree. Yes, rip tree, rip tree, rip tree. Black gets to take. Because we are going to kill or be killed. I'm terrible at Go. How would I ever see such things? Well, you can see there's like a, there's like a Co uh, thing going on there, right? This is actually pretty... almost a common sequence. The idea of the Co in the corner saving your life, right? That's actually a pretty uh, reasonably common shape. Oops, not that one. Stop flaunting my mistakes in front of me. All right, there we go. So, okay, I'm completely lost now. Who's doing what now? Okay, did that, did that, did that. Uh, connects, preserving liberties, takes. Now we're in the co. You're willing to bet white resigns? That's a, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good bet. Especially since he resigns right now. Yes, I put the 24. We almost got through with complete perfection with the tree. I almost did it. I almost did it. Oh well. But yeah, how do you fight this Ko and... I mean, this isn't just like to live for white, right? He's not trying to fight this to live. He has to fight this to kill all of black. And he's not going to be able to do that. Black just needs to live. That's all black needs to do. But white needs complete and utter life. And how do you do that when... You know, that's a threat, and that's a threat, and that's a threat. I mean, it's just, ah, it's just way too much. Way too much. So yeah, this game was interesting, I thought. I liked that center bit. I liked, I still like the center bit. Because right now, if this wasn't quite so large as it looks, it almost seems like the game should just go on, right? If White had more territory, th this could still be a really great game regardless of the situation. Because there's that burning question, what happens to these stones in the middle, given that they're completely locked out of connecting from anything ever again? Like, how much of this is Black going to keep? But, uh, no, White got horribly manhandled and you can't even begin to think about seeing what those stones are going to do or not do because that's just all dead or that's not all dead sorry which is why he has to end it so yeah that was an interesting game uh in my little opinion a bit quick a bit quick mind you but it's a really good example of when you're attacked don't go crazy and immediately think to yourself, oh my god, I have to defend myself immediately because you're probably missing Aji. You have time, unless you're playing 10 second go, in which case you have no excuse. 
But if you have time, you always stop and look around first. Are there weak points? Can I actually turn this against my opponent first? Because if you do, it's kind of crazy how the entire game could change. Because if black just ran away right now, if that's all black did was run away to safety and allowed white to build up, I mean, how different would this entire game be? It completely changes the nature of everything. I mean, now the small knights probably aren't going to be a problem. He still is lacking territory, but the small knights aren't going to be a problem. These stones were never a threat at this point. And actually, Black's the one that's in trouble. Because, I mean, there's still... There, okay, I'm just, okay, he wouldn't do that, okay? He'd probably, you know, just jump out down again if you were going to do that. There we go. Never mind, not in trouble anymore. But yeah, very different game, very different game. So that's why I picked it. Because cues especially always need reminded. And if you got the time, always look for that counterattack first, especially if you have already identified shape problems. And as we see here, small knight shape problems.